Hi, this is a lesson to help you get started using the InfoSemantics slider component widget. This widget allows you to create slider interactions in Captivate. So before we start, let's just talk about what is a slider. Well, a slider is a user interface element that you probably use every day without even realizing it. The most classic example of this would be the scroll bar in your browser that moves the web page up and down. This is a certain type of slider. So as we can see here, if we look at the scroll bar, it is basically made out of two components. The first component is the bit that moves up and down, which is called the handle. The second component is called the track, and that defines the boundaries for the handle. The handle will not move outside the track. So when we are using the slider component widget inside of Captivate, the first thing we have to do is create the track object and then the handle object. Let's see how to do that now. I've got Captivate open here in a very basic project. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a highlight box over here in the toolbar. I'm going to resize that highlight box to be long and thin. And that's going to act as my track. I'm first of all going to create a horizontal slider. So I'm going to give this highlight box a name of track. And then I'm going to create another highlight box. I'm going to make this one rather tall, but pretty thin, horizontally speaking. And I'm going to call this highlight box handle. So I've got my track object now and my handle object, and I'm ready to bring in my widget. I'm going to go insert widget, and I'm going to pick the info semantic slider component underscore AS3 Swift that you would have got uh, when you buy the widget or using the trial version, which you can get from our website. I'll click open to bring this into Captivate and Captivate is going to open up the settings for the widget right away. Now the first section here is the variable binding section. This is very important, but not what we're going to talk about in this lesson. We're going to talk about the settings underneath the required settings heading. As you can tell from the title, these are settings you have to configure every time you use the widget. And right up there is one box called handle and one box called track and each of them has a text field inside of them. As you might be guessing now, this is where we need to put in the name of the object we want the widget to use as the handle and the name of the object we want to use as the track. So we already know what those objects are called. The handle is called quite simply handle and the track is called track or lowercase. With those two pieces of information provided, I am now ready to have a look and see how this slider is working out. I'll click OK. And then once the properties have been saved, I'm going to press F4 to test the movie and wait for that to come up. When it does, I can see that the handle has been moved to the left side of the track. If I drag the handle, you can see it is now moving across the boundaries of the track. It won't move up or down, but will move left or right. One thing to take note of with the slider widget is that it will automatically move the handle to the center of the track. So for example, if I have a situation like this where the handle is off to the side of the track and then I test the movie, the handle will automatically be moved onto the track right in the center there. Okay, so this is a horizontal slider and we do see horizontal sliders sometimes in user interfaces. For example, right down here is a horizontal slider. But what if I wanted to create a vertical slider like this scroll bar over here? Well, in that case, we need to change a couple of things. First of all, we need to change the layout of our handle and our track. I'm going to rotate the track 90 degrees and I'll hold down shift to lock that rotation to uh, major increments. So that is now an up and down track. And then I'm going to grab the handle and I'm going to rotate that another 90 degrees and place that there. So now that is laid out like a up and down slider. But one, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to go to our widget double click on it to open up its settings. And there under the required settings, you can see there is a section there for orientation. By default, the horizontal orientation is selected, but we want to create a vertical slider. So in that case, we need to select 
the vertical orientation signified there by the up and down slider. With that selected, I'll click OK, allow the settings to update, and once again, press F4 to test the movie. And there in the output movie, we can see that the handle now moves up and down across the track rather than horizontally. So that is the bare basics that you need to know to use the slider component widget. And the next lesson, we'll see what the variable binding section does.